Hi, my name is Michael White, and in this video we're going to do a little creative phase alignment work using the InPhase plugin by Waves. So to start off with, uh, we're going to take a listen, a quick listen here to uh, some acoustic drums, just a kick, snare top and bottom, and a pair of overheads. All right, so we have a, just a quick uh, basic beat there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a duplicate playlist here. So what I can do is now I can apply some processing on this and then we can A, B, compare the unprocessed drums to the processed drums and see what I've done works better. So let's start off with the uh, in-phase plug. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little uh, work just with the overhead. So I'm gonna mute the other drum tracks here temporarily and Right, so we'll listen to just the overhead. So the first thing you'll notice is that the uh, gain of the left and right channel are off balance. And uh, we also need to do a little work uh, in aligning, uh, phase aligning the snare between the overhead mics. So uh, let's start by adding a little bit of gain to the left channel. So with the stereo uh, plugin of in phase instantiated, I'm gonna have the uh, alpha channel selected as channel one or the left channel and the beta channel selected as channel two. So it works in a pure stereo mode without sidechain. And we'll get to some sidechain stuff in a little bit. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust some gain of the left channel. So let's just do a little quick A, B here. Okay, so uh, you could hear that the uh, snare is decidedly pulling to the left. Part of that is uh, the gain. The other part of it is the fact that it's going to be reaching the left overhead sooner than the right overhead, which probably means this was recorded in uh, drummer's perspective. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a little bit of that. And uh, what I can do here is I can now grab this here and uh, drag this. Over. So this is the marker. Uh, so I'm going to drag the marker over to the beginning of the snare uh, transient peak here. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make an adjustment here so we can see the amplitude display uh, a little bit uh, larger here. I'm going to unlink the two sides and I'm going to increase the amplitude of the left side so we can see something that's a little more compatible with the right channel. Now you'll see here with the left channel that the hit actually happens here where it's uh, a slight delay time later. And I have two choices. I can either delay the left channel to meet with the right channel or uh, take the right channel and have it meet with the left channel. Now, when we get to phase aligning the overheads to the snare mic, then this will make a little bit more sense. But actually, before I do that, I want to actually, uh, I'm just gonna capture this again real quick. And what's really great is that it actually preserves the uh, setting there. And I'm going to copy this over to the B channel so we have the gain and we can do a full comparison of the A, uh, um, the movement and the non-movement. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drag this across. So I'm dragging the slider. I can also drag the waveform display if I like. And uh, I'm keeping an eye here on the face correlation meter. So you see as I move this along, you could see that it will sort of peak out and I can kind of watch that. And that's a nice helpful guide to see that I'm getting the best phase coherency of, of, of the whole sample that is uh, grabbed uh, with the capture setting here. And so this will give me the phase correlation of left and right. And uh, what we can do now is AB the two sides. So let's listen to what this is like um, with the movement and as the original. So you can hear that this snare is, is much uh, closer now uh, to center imaging. And with that shifted, you hear that the hi-hat shifts definitively over to the left, but so does the snare, which will pull the imaging out. All right, so what this is doing here is um, it will uh, mono it up a little bit. It'll pull the snare towards the center, but in a mix for a song like this, it's most likely that we will pan the snare drum center anyway. So we don't want the overheads to necessarily shift or smear the imaging of that to one side or the other. Otherwise, we end up having to mono up the overheads if we, um, in order to kind of keep that a little bit more centered and keep the imaging from skewing. So this is a way of just kind of getting that um, aligned up. So now that we have the snare lined up, what I want to do is I'm going to call up the audio suite version of this, an in-phase stereo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, Waves Copy Alpha Beta feature here. So I'm going to copy these settings as we have them set up here. And I'm going to paste this in 
uh, I'm going to paste the alpha channel in so you can see the gain settings here and I'm going to paste the beta channel here so you can see the shift uh, in the delay time 0.71 milliseconds. You could also see what that amounts to in samples when you look here. And uh, I'm going to select just a little bit of audio here and uh, just uh, do a little audition of that just to verify that that's in fact uh, correct and it sounds good and now I'm going to select the whole audio file and now I'm going to render this so what this is going to do now is it's going to create that movement and adjust the gain uh, from the two sides so you can see that that's a little bit better matched up on that side and now what I can do is I can deactivate this plugin because I will no longer need it and go on to phase two of our in phase work so um, in this first uh, channel setting what we did was we aligned uh, the snare uh, phase aligned the snare and balanced out the left and right channels and now we're going to get into something a little bit more sophisticated and and this is getting into phase aligning the overheads to the snare mic so when uh, the snare uh, drum is hit it will hit the uh, close mic of the snare the top mic which we're going to use as our reference sooner than it will hit the overheads okay and this is just physics and but what will happen is is that when it's at a, a certain phase cycle in the in the overhead uh, mic, uh, it will be at a different phase in the close mic. So because of that distance and time, you'll get a phase differential. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to try to match that up as best we can so that we can preserve sort of the tone of the fundamental of the snare drum. And uh, so that's, that's going to be the focus here. And we're going to do this by using a send. So I have a send here going to bus 17 fed pre-fader so I can actually mute the dry signal. And I'm going to set up my in-phase plugin so that uh, the beta alpha channel, excuse me, is set to stereo one two, and the beta channel is now going to be set to sidechain mode. And the sidechain uh, will be fed here from the key from bus 17. So now that I have that selected, um, I can now monitor when I hit stereo mix. I will be monitoring both the alpha channel and the beta channel. So if I monitor just the alpha channel, then I will hear just the overheads. And let me cue up my uh, cursor here. Or I can hear just the uh, trigger signal, right? So this is uh, just to show you that this is feeding into the beta channel as our key signal. So now that we verify this, now I can go to stereo mix and I'll hear a combination. And there's a little bit of gain uh, that's taken away here so that the combination of the two doesn't overload um, the input of the channel or the output of the channel. So uh, now that I have this set up, the next thing I want to do is I want to cue myself up to a snare drum hit, uh, or slightly before that, and uh, I'm going to grab or capture a sample of this. So now we can compare the uh, overheads to the snare. So you can see the actual uh, dry snare signal down in the bottom, and you can see the overhead signal on the right. Now uh, what's interesting here is if I, uh, I'm just going to uh, raise the amplitude here, of this a little bit so we can see the same hit. Now uh, you can see the phase differential here from the, the snare uh, uh, mic, the close mic here, which is the stick actually hitting in which drives the head down. That's just that little divot there and then you could see it popping up and then this waveform here if I just kind of slide this across a little bit, that would be the basic fundamental frequency of the snare drum and you could see that reflected roughly in the overheads as well. Now, I could actually pull the overheads up to align perfectly with, um, with the snare phase, but then what happens is you lose all of the air, right? There, there is actually part of the sound is getting the overheads, um, that distance, right? That air is part of the sound of the drum kit, which makes it sound natural. So we want to preserve that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the cleanest, first clean phase cycle of the snare drum, because after the initial hit, you get a little bit of extra garbled noise there, um, which uh, is, you know, just a result of the stick hitting on it. And you got the, the um, uh, beaters on the bottom, which also have something to do with this. And you could see that uh, when it's crossing that zero crossing here, the snare is in the overheads is happening slightly sooner than this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, set up here and I'm going to copy this over to the B side. So uh, now we could use this as a reference and that way we can compare um, the unmoved uh, to the moved, right? So it looks like uh, perhaps I should have uh, moved my left overhead to the right uh, just looking at this now, but 
And I can see a little bit movement with the, the uh, phase correlation meter, but because the signals are so different from each other, it's not likely that you're going to see a real dramatic difference in, in the left and right channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of guess a little bit to some degree. I'm going to kind of shift this over a little bit and see what happens here. Right, compare this to... Right, so you, you hear there's like a, a little bit of a low mid kind of weird tone that's picked up here. A little bit of an overtone. Where you can hear that it's more clearly that tone. Where you can hear that, that uh, fundamental frequency a bit more clearly in the snare drum. It sounds like more focused. So let's just kind of do a quick A-B of that again. Right, so you could hear that that focus a little bit more in the A setting with that slight movement. And uh, now I'm going to actually, uh, now we're going to continue to work from here, but we're going to use this as the basic starting point for what we have uh, going on. So we could see we're shifting the overheads back by 0.29 milliseconds. So it's, it's not a lot. Uh, that's about 14 samples. But it does create that slight tonal shift, which is kind of what we're looking for. I'm going to uh, take this now, and uh, we're going to make some adjustments according to this. And uh, what we're going to do is, now that we've phase aligned the um, uh, snare, now we're going to take a look at the kick drum and place that in here. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just move this to the side so we can see both of these guys uh, side by side right here. So this is the kick drum. And now we should be able to hear... right in the beta channel, the kick drum versus the snare drum. So just to verify that that's exact, it's, it's indeed happening. So now we have the kick drum in here, and let's just hear what's going on with the kick drum in this mix of the two. So you see here when I actually, what I'm going to do is actually just to capture another sample. So this is not going to affect any of the settings that I have here in my phase alignment section, right? So that, that shifting is still going to uh, be there just as it is. But what I'm gonna do now is do a little capture here of the kick drum. And uh, so now I'm gonna zoom out here and now you could see, uh, looks like we're just right on a, uh, um, on a kick sample right there. Let's see if that's, is that a kick or a snare? Let's just All right, so there's our kick right there. So let's just uh, start uh, with that. You can see that it doesn't uh, kind of pop out nearly as much as the other one. Let's see if I can just, uh, what happens if I go over to here, because this is also a kick channel, but I think the amplitude there is not quite enough. So let's just move right over to here and see if we can work with that guy. So now what we see is our kick drum. Um, and uh, and I'm just going to pull the amplitude down here and bring it up in here so we can kind of compare the two. So uh, now what we have here is the kick. And what we're going to do is try to figure out how we can phase align this better. So what I have is if I flip the phase 180 degrees, what's going to happen is you can hear the low end kicking in on the kick drum but what's going to happen is it's going to disappear from the snare. Right, so there's one or the other. I'm just going to back off the, uh, the gain here uh, to more closely match what I have in the mix here. And So what I'm going to do here, it, rather than start to move anything and, and like what we have here, um, I just really displayed this so you could see the delay time from the kick hit to how long it takes to get to the overhead. So we're not going to shift it because we've already matched up the snare. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to now uh, do a little creative work here with the phase alignment filters. So what really happens here is that the fundamental frequency here of the kick drum is uh, out of phase or um, losing partial phase at least uh, at its fundamental frequency. So what I want to do here is I want to kind of shift this so I can find it. And what it does is it puts that frequency out of phase while leaving everything else in phase. Um, and then I have a cue control here that allows me to work with this. So if I now apply this, right, I can now play with this a little bit.
So I'm going to go a little bit lower here so I don't affect the snare so much. So I'm inverting the phase of that lower frequency and now I'm going to play with the Q to see if I can tighten this up a little bit. And let's compare the difference between this on and off. Okay, so what I've done here now is I've shifted this so that, and it actually serves a couple of valuable purposes. One, it kind of sucks a little bit of low mid-range out of uh, the kick drum, which kind of opens up the sound a little bit and focuses the low end a little bit more, which is kind of nice. And then it also works with balancing the snare sound. And just to give you an idea of what this is like, let's go back to unprocessed. Now, one thing also that we could do here if we wanted to is we could apply another filter and start to phase align some of the high end, maybe if we want to add in a little bit or get back a little bit of the presence that we lost here. And let's hear the difference between those two. And another way to approach this, because this is also doing some weird things to the tone of the snare, is I can also uh, use a peaking filter here and invert the phase at that particular frequency. And I sweep it until I kind of find a frequency that gives it maybe the snap that I'm looking for. It's without it. And then I can adjust the cue here to widen it. And then let's compare that. Now, what's interesting here is that if we listen to um, the overheads on their own, Right, this is just the overheads. Uh, and what we have to do here is just switch this back to overheads. So you'll hear... You won't really hear a fundamental difference in the sound. Um, because this is just phase aligning at different frequencies or phase shifting particular frequency areas, but it's not an equalization, which is sort of the confusion. So uh, where that kind of comes into play is when it's mixed with the other audio signals, uh, the kick and the snare, uh, as a reference, then you will hear that um, um, balanced in now with those, those particular frequencies or areas that were deficient are now supporting each other and therefore it acts like a form of equalization when it's all mixed together um, except you're actually not adding an equalization you're just getting the phase correlation between the two instruments correct or the two separate microphones correct or better than what it was um, now once we've done this and let's just say that we're happy with what we have here then the next phase would be to apply this processing now to the overhead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this here and uh, we're going to go back to our audio suite and the fastest way is just to get to the uh, in-phase stereo. Now this is a little bit tricky here so what we want to do now is we want to uh, apply this uh, to the uh, stereo mix, right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set this up to be uh, channel 1 and 2. I copy the settings uh, and I'm going to paste uh, the A settings. Now there are no B settings per se, so I could paste that, but there's really nothing there, right? So um, I've pasted the A settings and now I can just verify that these have 
the exact same uh, settings. Now, I don't want to uh, use the stereo mix. I just want to use the A, uh, which is just the stereo. And uh, what I can do is I can go ahead and I can just audition that. Whereas if I do it this way, then the gain will be shifted, right? So, which I don't want to do. So this, now what I can do here is I can uh, take this and I can now render this processing into it. And then let's just verify that this is actually done what we think it's done. So I'm just gonna uh, bypass uh, this plugin right here. Helps if I get the right shortcut. And then let's just listen. That's just the overheads. And now let's hear it with the kick in it. Okay, and now let's uh, compare that to the um, unprocessed signal. All right, so the the snare doesn't quite have the, the same snap to it. The kick is kind of muddy overall. And let's just listen to what we have here with the in-phase processing. Oops, oh, I think uh, not all of these guys switched. So uh, let me just uh, audition that again. So this is with the processing. And then this is without the processing. And uh, okay, not sure, let's see. Okay, there we go. So you can hear all the shiftiness in terms of the phase, a little bit of the, the kind of weird tonal coloration of the snare, like a little bit of the muddy nature of the kick, and let's hear what it is now with all of the alignment. All right, so you can hear how the imaging is much more centered and balanced, right? The snare is significantly more solid. And, and that's the basics of that there. One of the thing that uh, we could do uh, in here, if we wanted to kind of play with the snare top, snare uh, bottom mic, is I'm gonna uh, now uh, take this out because we no longer need this, and then uh, call up the, um, the in-phase um, plugin of, uh, let's just zero this out for a second. There we go. Um, now what we have here is a mono in-phase plugin that's uh, put on the snare bottom mic. And now I want to process the snare bottom signal and try to match that up to the snare top. So I have another sand that is applied here going to bus 18. And this is feeding into the uh, beta channel here of this in-phase. So now what we can do is we can uh, mute these guys here and solo up just the snare bottom. And that's the snare bottom and the and that's the snare top, right? So we got that, and when we listen to the mono mix, we can hear a blend of the two of those guys right there, okay? And we may need to adjust some gain there to kind of balance that out a little bit. Maybe I'll bring this up a little bit. Okay, so uh, even though this clipping a little bit, it should be uh, serve as a reference for us. So now what I wanna do here is I wanna capture this so we can see what the difference is and then maybe do a quick phase alignment on it. Okay, and so we could see the snare um, hit right here and we could see that extra gain. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit and move my marker over of it to the front side of this and let's see if we can get this guy to, to line up a little bit better here. So. Now, um, when I uh, compare my uh, snare top to the snare bottom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlink these guys and just kind of pull this back a little bit to planet Earth here. And then you could see how uh, what we have here is um, the phase cycle and very much like the, uh, the early hit on uh, the snare top and bottom, there's gonna be a delay or a latency here between how long it takes for the uh, signal to get to the snare bottom mic, which is more distant from the top head, and, and therefore the timing is going to be slightly different. And it's it's gonna pick up a slightly varied signal because obviously it's on the bottom, but we could see here that um, the initial phase inversion was done in the recording, 
and it's just uh, slightly delayed here. So what I want to do here is I kind of want to uh, play with this a little bit and see if I can get the alignment up a little bit better. So it's not uh, off very far. So maybe if I'm this uh, a later phase cycle might serve as a better reference here. And let's just kind of zoom in on that a little bit and see if we can kind of come up with a good tonal reference here. Now, um, from here, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy this over to the B channel so we can hear that uh, by comparison. So we'll just make sure that those two guys are the same. And then I'm going to do a little phase adjustment here. Uh, again, you may not see this. Some things in the phase correlation meter because the signal coming through the snare bottom mic is so significantly different sounding than from the top mic. You may not see that show up on the phase correlation meter. All right, so there you can hear the phase shift. Now what this does is it brings the fundamental in, but what we're ha what's happening is we're losing a little bit of the brightness. All right, so you really get that fundamental and that snap in there a little bit more. But let's see if we can now shift this, right, and kind of bring this in a little bit so we can... And I can compare that maybe to a uh, doing this with a, maybe this is a little bit better way to do it. All right, so I can compare this, uh, compare this side to this guy. And that really gives it kind of the snap that you would probably be looking for, you know, from, from the snare bottom mic. So let's kind of go with that with just a little peaking filter. So the idea here is that where we're losing some of the high frequencies, uh, we're going to mix a, a little bit of uh, this out of phase back in to kind of add some of that brightness in. Again, it's actually not changing the frequency response of the original signal, it's it's changing the phase at those particular frequencies. And the slope here is changing it to varying degrees that you see uh, in graduations here along that left side. So now that we've kind of got this, this uh, reference here for this, now we can go ahead and we can now process this signal, okay? And so again here I'm going to call up um, my audio suite, except for now I'm going to do in-phase mono instead of stereo. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go uh, into the copy AB. I'm going to select mono mix and then to paste the A channel setting here so we can see that it has these identical uh, curve settings, right? And the latency is the same or the delay uh, is pulled back by the exact same amount. I can uh, grab a section of this. So let me just kind of move this out of the way just to verify that this is in fact. And now I can, all right, and so I was hearing this reference together before, so now I'm going to switch back to A here, and now I'm going to select this whole thing here and render this form of processing here. And now we can uh, kind of compare those two guys here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass this guy right here, and now we can uh, hear our drums all back in perspective. Right, and so that's just now we can mix in as much of that as we like. Gives it a nice little snap to the snare. All right, so I'm just going to uh, kill this plug in here for a second, and now let's compare this our in phase drums, right, to the original drums. Uh, so let's go back here, make sure for some reason this guy doesn't want to go along. All right, and now let's go uh, back here to our in phase. And so it's uh, it's almost like uh, applying a form of equalization, but you're actually not applying any equalization. You're just uh, um, adjusting and working with the phase uh, and the way that um, those different microphones mix together to kind of help shape the sound that you're looking for. So. This is just uh, an incredibly 
uh, powerful tool, uh, the Enphase plugin uh, for this, and just really, really creative and well thought out uh, with the all pass filters, which is what this section is called, uh, and working with the phase alignment within particular frequency bands and uh, how that allows you to shape the characteristics, even if it's not necessarily correct. Um, when you have different microphones and different things that will pick up different uh, frequency characteristics and um, they don't always phase align the same way. And particularly when you move mics at different distances, some frequencies will be in phase and some will be out of phase. And this allows you to compensate for those variations and those differences. Um, so very, very powerful tool. Uh, love it and uh, hope uh, some of this made sense here in phase aligning drums and just the power of the in-phase plug-in when working with acoustic drums. Thanks for tuning in.